gonna shear this sheet. Tie this up so we don't get anybody out. And for staying in the whole theme with Strawberry Bank and historical colonial times, I will be shearing this sheet with hand blades, like was done in the time period of the setting of Strawberry Bank. I typically shear, uh, this year so far I've done about 1,300 sheep yep, and a little over 4,200 alpacas and various numbers of goats and almonds on top of that. But everything I do is shearing now is all with electricity. Uh, and, uh, I'm, I'll be shearing these by hand. It's strictly demonstration purpose uh, to, to shear this sheep with blades. It's going to take 15 to 20 minutes. When I shear them with electricity, it's about three and a half minutes to sheet. So, I, yeah, when we go to a farm and I'm hired to shear for somebody, um, we get paid by the animal. So if you can do one every 20 minutes versus one every three and a half, you, you can guess where you're going to make more of your paycheck at. So, uh, that's what we do. But I have in front of you here a little bit of history in shearing and the different styles and types of machines. Um, the first wool was gathered off of trees and bushes and rocks. And she would run by and brush up against it or it starts to get itchy and they rub it and it falls off. And people would gather it and start to make clothes. Then they go into cutting it off with sharp stones or whatever they can find. And then we get into uh, more advanced equipment in the hand shearing blades. These two here to the left, those are about 120 years old. Um, that, that was pretty typical for about 300 years. And then the Industrial Revolution came and people started making more machinery. And that's what's standing up in front of you is crank machines. Uh, a person would typically you, you try to draft a big strong person and you get them to stand. You look like you could qualify. <laughs> you stand here and you just crank and you crank. Uh, the faster you hand crank that, the more power it sends down to me to be able to shear the animal. Uh, this particular machine was improvised from students at UNH in about the 1935 bracket and they took the hand crank off and hooked the electric motor with a pulley off. So that it was an evolution for them at that point in time. Um, and then somewhere along the line, and, and I've seen my history off of cheering and different types of equipment. Um, this, I actually found this on eBay from Budapest, Hungary. And for me, it's kind of been the missing link in the difference from going to the old hand shearing blades where you're squeezing two blades together like a pair of scissors to what we use today in water, which is a cut water piece here. Uh, the bottom piece here is a comb. People say one side's bent, it's designed that way. When this goes on the machine, because I'm right-handed, I shear right-handed, the straighter tooth that's on here is what goes through the standing fire. Okay, so with, as I'm shearing along, this side is what is nearest to me, what's already been shorn. And when this is going through the fleece, the only thing I can see is not that much. But that's my visual depth gauge of how far it is. styles of shearing combs that I use today. It's, it's all become modernized. You know, it's like you go to Walmart and you, you buy your home barbershop kit and it's got all the little, you got all the little plastic uh, attachments and feed on it. You can give yourself whatever depth of style that you want. That's what all those different styles, um, they range from nine teeth in a four inch span to 23 teeth. Every other, uh, I have a couple cones here that every other 
boot has a riser on it. So you're leaving yourself just a little bit more ridge in the whole, the whole span that way. So we went from 150 and 400 years ago, just get it off, to being very specialized for the species that you're doing, whether you're doing sheep or like you know, package over there, and to do uh, llamas, angora goats, small kids if they really want to get in the way. <laughs> I promise I won't touch your kids' locks for you. <laughs> so we're going to shear this sheep today. Um, as I started talking with this young lady in the front row just a few minutes ago, I, I said, how would you think we're going to get this sheep to stand still for shearing? You know, I said, can we ask it to set and stay like a dog? And she decided, no, that wouldn't work. And I said, well, how about we put it in a barber's chair, or like in a beauty salon chair? She didn't think that would work either. But see, I got this idea that I think if we just flip them over, okay, and and ask her to stay, we can still take a ride in the chair. Isn't that the best fun of it all, you know, is spin her right around, getting her to go for a ride, you can go either way, you know. See? She goes for a ride in the chair, sort of. Okay? So, in shearing the sheep, people say, I've tried it, it's hard, the sheep got up and got away from me. And the biggest, one of the biggest things in shearing electrics or go back a couple hundred years with the hand pieces it's control of the hand. She's really stressing out on me here right now. I think she's going to to sleep. Um, but as long as she feels comfortable and secure. Granted, this sheep has been through this process. They, these sheep that we have are Lincoln long wolves and cotton wolves. Um, they are referred to as a long wool breed of sheep, and we typically shear them twice a year anyway. They're normally done in mid to late March, and then again in late September, early October range. So we're not just saving these sheep, we're doing the demonstration for Strawberry Bank today. Um, this is normal shearing and what we do. The only thing different is I'm not, I don't have an extension cord. I can't plug in. So we're, we're doing it the old fashioned way. In shearing a sheep, it's all about fiber harvest. Okay, you can go to a fair, local fairs around, or Stratum Fair, and, oh, nice. Uh, Stratum Fair, and Deerfield, and Freiburg, you know, all the local fairs around. Surely somebody's seen a 4 H kid with a sheep on the trimming stand, they're making it look pretty. That's all cosmetic. That's just like going to the beauty shop and coming out with a pretty dude, you know? I mean, what this is all about is just getting the fiber off so these folks, the lady in the house, can do the spinning and weaving. That it's what makes the clothes. In doing that, the first thing we do is we take the belly fiber off. The belly fiber doesn't have the crimping and the condition. It doesn't have the luster, the shine on it that the rest of the body has. This, this is shiny white underneath here. When she lays down, when she's walking through the grass, it's just not quite the same. It doesn't have the same lock structure. So we shear it off first and we throw it out. It can still be used, but it's not the high quality fiber that you want to put against your skin. You can make it into a rug or something like that. And that's what our little pile behind us is. That's the throwaway three sheep that I've already done. So we're going to set her up here and we're going to start shearing on her. Now shearing on a sheep or an alpaca or anything else is just like shaving. you got to keep the skin tight or you're going to end up putting buttonholes in them. A little necks. Once in a while that happens. I certainly try not to let it happen. And if it does, we have the mayor and the means to take care of it. It would be the first time anybody or anything has ever had a knicker cut on them. But we take it off, and then maneuver around with it. Um, I've, been, I've been shearing sheep for 
about 34 years, going on 35 years. Four years ago when my friends asked me, would you want to come to Strawberry Bank and do a shearing demonstration? In early October, we typically don't do a whole lot of shearing, just these long wools anyhow. So I said, yeah, sure. Well, then they tell me, well, we'd like it done circa 1760. <laughs> Friends, I had to go on YouTube to find out how to do the antique style, the old style of sharing. Um, the first one I ever did was in front of you same folks. If you happen to be here four years ago for the first one of these, this was the first time that I had ever completely sheared a sheep for fiber harvest using hand blades. And you know, I don't know, it may not look like I'm doing too much, but how many of you want to offer me your head and let me trim your head <laughs> with these things? These are very sharp. I'm trying my best not to nicker, um, but we, we get the fiber off. Um, people are asking, won't she be cold? You know, we had a chilly night last night, and yeah, she may be shivering a little bit. We really don't worry about it. Sheep can handle cold weather so much better. Wake up here. <laughs> <laughs> um, they sheep can handle cold weather so much easier than they can heat. In the summertime, we always have sheep shorn before the summer heat hits because they can't handle the heat and you can end up with uh, animal heat stressing and potentially die. Um, the alpaca folks, I start shearing in mid-March down in Georgia and I work my way north as the temperature starts rising. In mid-March we all still got snow up here, you know, I mean April Fools we had nine inches last year and you know, it was uh, two years ago, not this past year. Um, but, so, by doing the hand shearing, the blade shearing on her, I'm not able to get her as close down to her body as what I would with the electrics. So it's already leaving a little more stubble on her. And being a long wool, it's rapid wool growth. It'll, within a couple weeks, she'll have another good inch and a half of wool back on her. And because because all this that you see, I mean, this is better than four inches. You're talking five inches. That's only four, four and a half months worth of growth. So they're growing easily an inch a month on. And these these sheep are all you know well taken care of. The the two big ones with the collars on that's in there. Folks, if y'all believe in reincarnation and you end up coming back as a sheep, pray you end up at that lady's house because she's going to baby him and take care of him. I don't know if she's standing here yet or not. But I'm not saying that just because she may be standing here. She, she does really take care of her animals. These other ones here, they're more farm animals. They're not babied as much. They still have barn and shelter to come into. 